Hi, and welcome back to our discussion of Linux booting. Today we're going to talk about how to control the way the kernel boots, to pass arguments to the Linux kernel as it's loading up, and later we're going to discuss the what to do in case something goes wrong with the boot process if it doesn't boot altogether, or if something happens and it and prevent, presents you with a result you're not happy with. First, however, controlling the Linux kernel. Now, the kernel is simply a file which contains all the core arguments, the core programming necessary to run the, the basic structure of the whole Linux operating system. And it's a file that lives in the slash boot directory. If you actually go to the slash boot directory and display the contents of the directory, you'll see there are a number of files, among others, that are called that, that are, begin with the letters V-M-L-I-N-U-Z, or U-Z, I should say. I'm Canadian, I'm afraid, and I often say Z. So V-M-L-I-N-U-Z. Uh, those files are the various releases of the Linux kernel. They are G-Z, it's G-Z. they end with the letters dot G-Z, which means it's an archive, uh, and it's compressed. So the, the, the boot program will decompress the file as it goes, but as it's decompressing and as it's loading the instructions from the file, it can also accept arguments. To do that, you have to get into the grub screen. Grub is the bootloader that you should be familiar with. It, you get into the grub screen. Sometimes as your computer loads, it automatically takes you to that screen. That's the picture you're looking at now. Uh, but but uh, the, in some systems, you'll instead of getting that screen, you might get a splash screen or just a blank screen. So. If you want to make sure you get the grub screen as you're booting, click on the right shift key on your keyboard, and that should bring you to the grub screen. Once you're there, highlight using the cursor key up and down, highlight the particular version of the Linux kernel you want to load, highlight it, and then hit the letter E for edit. Once you're there, you can enter arguments. So the first example we have is an argument that we're going to give to the variable init init, let's say, we want to make it init equals bin bash. That'll allow you to load this Linux kernel without a password. Or another example, uh, you'll give the value of root, or you'll give the argument of root, the value of dev sda1, meaning that the root that Linux will boot to will be on the first hard drive on your system. You could have, of course, you could choose to boot to a different hard drive or to, an, to a USB drive or to all kinds of different media, which we'll talk about at a different time. But these are the arguments that you can pass along to the Linux kernel as it's loading. Now, what if one morning you turn on your computer or your client's computer and Linux just doesn't boot? Or something catastrophic happens during the boot process and it doesn't work the way you'd like it to work? So you should know that just about everything that happens within Linux leaves behind a record of some sort in one of the logs. And the system logs are controlled mostly by a file in the etc, the etc directory, called syslog.conf, or in the case of Ubuntu, rsyslog.conf. Now we can we see that there is such a file, rsyslog.conf, on my Ubuntu over here. Uh, so that controls what messages will be sent to which log files. Most of the log files live in the var log directory. Here you can see the, the contents of the var log directory, and there are a lot of logs that each cover different situations and different levels of, of, of error or problems, like the message, for instance, or the boot log file, which is very important for, re, for finding out what's, what's happened this last time you booted. Uh, there are other files like kern.log, uh, and uh, and all the other ones you see here. And take some time, perhaps, as an exercise, go through the various log files and the directories within the, the var log directory itself to find out what others, uh, what other log files, what... Now, suppose you see some message, an error message, that appears to relate to the system kernel. You could go through the kernel log and see if there's any refer reference to this message, or perhaps more efficiently, you could actually grep the actual message, the error message. So I'm just using examples of fail or error, and I'm actually coming up with a whole lot of uh, messages in kernel log. Maybe I should take a second look at this system. But whatever the message happened to be, feed it in to grep and, and see if it shows up in the kernel.log, kern.log, or the boot.log, 
and uh, to, to, to see if there's anything that, uh, that any more information these logs can provide. Alternatively, you could, without, without CAT, using CAT, which just has the streams, the whole text of the log file to your screen, you could actually use less, which opens it up as a file, and using the, hitting the, the uh, gives it to you one screen at a time, and hitting the space bar will, will move you to the next screen. Q will exit from less. Finally, don't forget Google or whichever other search engine gives you good results. Feed the error message you come across into the search engine and see what other people have done when they came across the very same problem. Now it's time for our review quiz. Here's today's question. In which directory will you find the boot.log file? Is it etc. slash logs, var slash log, home slash run, or boot slash grub? Which directory will you find the boot dot log file? And in fact, it is the var slash log file. Hope to see you next time.